Hello, this is a short video on how to create and read JSON document from Go. So let's get started. So I'm going to make a project directory and let's call it GoJSON. And then um, GoJSON, I'm seeding into that directory. I'm going to, of course, start my Visual Studio Code Editor. I'll create my Go application. So main.go package main and then of course function main. Now we know that this is going to work, so I don't really have to test this, but I'm gonna open a terminal here at the bottom so I don't have to return to my other command line. And so let's start off by generating a document a, a JSON document. So the easiest way to do that is to first create something that's going to represent the structure of our JSON document. So let's pretend that we want to store a list of user information in a JSON document. So let's do type user struct. And then I'm going to say I have username. It's a string. And I have password. And that's a string also. I have email string. Now you might be wondering why am I using uppercase here? As you know from in Go that uppercase means that you can access it without being in a member of this package. And that's going to be the case when we use the JSON package. It We're going to give it an object of user so it needs to be able to access these fields and so we must make them pu public. Now we have a type that represents some data. Let's create a simple user. So let's call it user are we going to say we have equal user and let's put some there we're going to say our first user is um, John Doe and password is change me and email address is John Doe at email.com very simple okay just one object for now and of course we can print this out if we want so we can do fmt that print len and we can print out our user so now if we do ls and we do go run main exactly we just see that printed out but how do i write this now to a json document or create a file as a json document so what I'm going to use is the JSON package, and I'm going to create an encoder. So I'm going to say JSON encoder colon equals, and I'm going to say JSON that new encoder, and I need to give it something here, which is an I/O reader. And in order to create an I/O reader for my JSON document, I'm going to use a buffer. So I'm going to say var buff is from bytes that buffer. So I'm creating a new buffer. Remember, when you're using buff bytes buffer, you don't need to actually initialize it in any way, really. I mean, if I wanted to, I could just say var buffer equals new buffer. And there's a reason why I can say create a new buffer because I'm gonna pass a pointer to this buffer here. So I don't have to do ampersand, I can just simply pass that in. And so, now what I have is a place in which I can store the JSON document, right? That's encoded, right? And now I can say encode that encode this thing, which is user. I can say encode it. But notice my encoder was initialized with this buffer. So when I say encode that encode user, it's going to take my user object, turn it into JSON, and write it into this buffer. And then now I can print out the buffer. So I can say, you know, uh, IO that copy, for example. And I can say OS.std out, let's copy to standard out, um, the stuff from my buffer. All right. And that now is going, because my buffer is acting like a IO reader, IO writer, depending on what I want. So now I can 
expanded bytes at the end of statement. So, oh, sorry, I need to enclose this in. This will happen when you program in too many different languages. Sometimes forget what you need to do. Okay, so now that gives us our. So that's the code I'm gonna keep on the screen. And now let's run this and see what we get. And notice this is our object and this is it encoded as JSON. And we can say users, for example. So let's change this to rename symbol. Let's call it users. And I'm gonna make this a slice of users instead. So slice of user object and um, this is one and here is another one and then I'm gonna close it off and instead of doing this I'm gonna cheat a little bit and I'm gonna make this Jane Doe um, please change me and then of course this is Jane all right I'm gonna take this out so now I have an array of users and so I'll just rerun the code to see what that looks like and as you can see as a JSON object so let me remove comment out this for a second so our screen is not too modeled and you can see JSON object how it's different than here it has a square back in the front to represent that it's an array so what if I wanted to have something like I call it database so I got type database or user database as a struct struct and maybe what I have is users is an array of user and uh, maybe I have some other things in there um, I don't know uh, what else can we have on our database um, type or something is a string okay I'm just trying to show you how we can expand this very easily so now that I have users I can say database colon equals colon equals to user database and this users is populated with users and type let's call it simple database or something like that simple I just trying to show you can how you can grow this by adding more types and nesting types and so I'm going to encode our database and let's save that and run the code and again notice oh I have a JSON object that has a field user and then a type so this is working file but I still haven't shown you how to write this stuff file but hopefully this here was a tip to show you so you can easily write to a file because I can easily say f colon error colon equal os that create and I can create the file and let's call it my user db that json for example and then I can say if nil not equals to error what do I want to do I want to log fatal f or something um, or ln the error otherwise I want to defer close in the file f that close and now I want to copy this information to the file and let's save that and I am going to run this again and now when I do cat user database.json there it is and this is a valid json file because i have something called jquery i can use to pretty format this user json file and as you can see it formats very nicely for me so this is a valid json file so that's how easy we can write data to json but there's something else if you notice our fields have these uppercase and maybe we don't like that we want to use little lowercase so we can use tags and so i'm going to write it click here and say had tags to structure and so it can do this for me very easily if I have the plugins I notice how it says for JSON use lowercase and that's all there is to it and now if I save and rerun this oh sorry I have to rerun yep and then I do this now we have the lowercase 
All right, so now this is how we can output something to JSON. So I'm going to call this function create JSON file. And it takes a database, which is a user database. And I'm going to copy all of this to it. Here, I'll move that instead of saying copy, I'll move that there. And so uh, here, this is how we create the JSON file, the database. All right, what about if we wanted to read some data back in? Well, um, we know this works because I, I simply just sort of move things around. So um, I can comment this out and I'm gonna say, database colon equals well actually why don't I just do this instead uh, I'm going to move all of this into here uh, let's format it back again I'm not going to pass a parameter here so when you call this file it creates a JSON file and now we're not going to use that but instead, we're going to say read JSON data. So, what do we want to? How do we want to read the data? Well, we have to have somewhere to store the data. So, we can do that is user database. All right. So, we have an empty user database. This time, we can create a decoder because we want to decode JSON data. So, we said JSON at new decoder. And it has to decode from somewhere. So it, this is going to be a file, okay, or some reader, IO reader. So since we have been creating a file here, why don't we do the same thing? Just copy this and put it here. And basically, what I'm saying is, and we could put this lower down. We don't need this up here. We can move this up a bit. So we don't create the database until we need it. But so what I'm saying is create a um, open a file. I want to create a file now. I want to open it. So open this file. If there's no error opening the file, then I want you to do a JSON, 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 new decoder, and new decoder. And then what is it complaining? Use okay. We cleared the variable, we haven't used it yet. Now I have a empty object here now I'm say decoder that decode and we have to put the address because now it needs to write into this thing which is what I was mentioning before so we use ampersand D and now we should read back in our data and if all went well I should be able to print out a database and have the information coming from the file and so we have commented out the code to create a JSON file. Let's move it up to the top. And this reads in JSON data. So let's run it and see. So that's already saved. And there you go. That's our data from the file. And we can verify this is working because what we can do is let me run jQuery again and overwrite user json and so uh, that's not what i wanted uh, let's put back in our data copy this put it back in the file i was trying to format it ah that's not valid json data let's see go back and get our valid json data Oh, there it is. It's nicely formatted here. So this is what I want. Copy, paste. Okay. And what I want to do is add another record. So do I shift up? I'm gonna call this. Let's just call this V A for me. Must change me. All right, and so save this, and then of course, if I go back to the terminal, 
and let's clear it and rerun our code as you can see this record shows up so this tells us that oh, we are correctly reading JSON data and that is all there is to manipulating JSON in Go. Thanks for your time. See you in the next video. I'll post some short videos from time to time on simple things. All right, take care. Bye.